so excited, you guys. I'm not leaving. <laughs> I am saying goodbye forever. Full face of goodbye forever. So let's just get started. These are products that I don't like for various reasons, and I'm going to tell you what those reasons are as we put them on the face. I'm getting a really late start today, so let's talk about foundation. You guys, interrupting. <laughs> From the next day, I was editing this last night, and, well, I realized while I was shooting that the video was taking a turn. It was unplanned where it was going. When I sat down, I was absolutely ready to say bye-bye to all of these items, and I was just giving them a last hurrah. And then one by one, I thought, well, you know what? Maybe this isn't so bad. And while I got to the end, I thought, actually, this look really isn't all that bad. So... Instead of waiting for us to get to that point where there's a turn, because a lot of you might be done by then, I am asking for your help. If you have strong feelings about any of these products, write it down below. You were right, it's going, or yeah, it's really actually not even not bad, it's actually good. And I also wanted to say, I, there's a part of me that wanted to reshoot the whole thing because I was sitting too low for my camera yesterday, and I didn't realize it until I started to edit. That's not true. When I sat down and looked at my monitor, which I have my laptop plugged into my camera, I thought, I look really wide. Maybe it's my hair, because I had just uh, washed my hair and, you know, did the dice, and it was a little big. But when I put it into my computer to start editing, I'm like, wow, I really look weird. Where you sit really matters. Your camera really matters. If it's too high up, it's going down and making you look wide. I don't know. But it's not doing it today. Maybe it was my hair. But, yeah. So, <laughs> not that you need to know. Now, let's go on. Oh, but I do want to say, it gets a little better. If that is irritating you as much as it's irritating me, that will get better. All right. Let's go on to the rest of the video. The Kosas foundation is actually very, very pretty on the skin. The problem is they don't have good shades, and actually I think I had more than three at one point. They have light, 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 and the light will get a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, and then it jumps to medium that's quite a bit darker than the last shade in the light range. They don't have something for light, medium skin like mine, and their undertones are really weird too. So I couldn't, I don't remember what I decided was a great mix. So this is 200 and it's too dark. I'm going to put two pumps on my hand because I'm going to use a brush and that really eats up a lot. And the 200, they're saying that this is neutral. I don't think so. And my other two choices are warm 170 and warm 130. So let's try the 130 one pump. And there you go. And wish me luck. Now let's put this on the face. So, I feel it's a teeny bit warm. I'm really red right now because I was bending over looking for products and all the blood rushed to my face, but very, very hard to find a match even though it's very beautiful on the skin, I find that I just don't go to it because I don't want to be bothered trying to figure out how to mix a good color for myself. And when I look at this part of my neck right here, where there's no redness, I don't know, it feels a little olivey to me. I don't know. I think I've used everything on my hand already. If Kosas ever comes out with a better color range, which they might, because when they came out with their concealer, they were egregiously yellow. And I think enough people complained <laughs> and said, oh my God, seriously? They said to me, I emailed them, and they said, we are working on more colors. And they did. It took like a year or maybe longer, but they came out with much, much better colors. So I'm hoping they will do the same thing with their foundation because it's super pretty. It really is. To me, it's a lot like the NARS, which also 
not a good color for me. The only difference is sometimes I feel like this is drying, but sometimes I don't. I would recommend if you actually have a good color in this line, you might want to try this out. But for me, I'm trying to clean things up around here, and I think I can do without these three foundation colors. But I mix together the 200 and the 130, and it's not terribly bad, and yet somehow not right. Uh, and I'm not sure what it is. Foundation. Bye-bye forever. Blush. These from Rare Beauty. I actually had about three or four of them, and I recently did part one of my declutter for blushes, and I still haven't edited together part two. These are so damn fussy and difficult to work with. I, I just, I was so impressed initially, but I never go to them because they're just fussy. This color is super pretty. Joy, which has some orangeness to it. So I'm just doing it with my fingers. Look at that. Way too much. Going with a beauty blender to work that out and crossing my fingers so that it won't be too much. And this will fade a little bit, you know, in the next few minutes, honestly. So hopefully I haven't done too much. But my God, what a risk to take. If you're in a hurry and you just need to get out of the house, this is not a product that you want to use because you can go to way too much land super quickly and then you are really in trouble. So all of these, you know, I like the color. It's just too fussy and I just, I don't need to have, I don't need to have this in my life. So. Bye bye forever. God, I'm actually saying bye bye forever to joy. That's a horrible thing to say, but bye bye forever for this. Whoops. I kind of want to do a concealer video just showing you all my concealers. This one from Laura Mercier. A lot of people said this is such a fantastic concealer, but when you get older, you're kind of looking for covering your darkness and not looking even more old <laughs> you know so you want it to be pretty kind to your skin and I just don't think this one did it for me it just somehow missed it it is a thicker texture and it makes it a little more difficult to blend and again when you're older you really don't want to tug too much on your under eye skin and I'll just help it out with my finger and initially it's actually not looking too bad let's see what it looks like at the end of the video because if that's what it's about is it going to take all my moisture out and is it going to give me um, a much more lined look but actually hmm, not bad I gotta pull you in so you can see what's going on under the eyes. I'm, I might be keeping this. Well, we'll see at the end of the video. You know what? Usually I go on with my eyes next. So we're going to do that. Now this I didn't buy. This Tamara gave me and she said, hey, I think you might like this. It's from ColourPop and it's called Blushing. And honestly, I've never tried it. <laughs> But I just, um, it's not a color story that super, super excites me. So we'll just kind of do something fast. I thought because my blush is kind of orange, it, it might work okay. So we're going to go with this one all over the lid. And this is kind of like having a, a powder really, because it's such a skin tone kind of thing, for my skin tone anyway. Now the next shade darker actually is this one, but I think it's lighter, it's just brighter. So for mattes, this is it right here, which is a little too dark for me. So maybe I'll take this, knock off, and then go into this one. And put it where my so-called crease might be. That's why I love this brush. It has a little point to it so I can put it very specifically where I want it and then as you press down the other bristles blend it. 
here's my truth, you guys. I was just doing my red light and this idea came to me and I thought, oh, maybe I'll shoot this today. And the, I just didn't have time to put together something really, really good for the eyeshadow. Everything else, I had no problem. I think that this formula is fine and the color story is fine if you like it. I certainly have eyeshadow palettes that I just don't like that much that would be better in this position. Now I'm going to go with a PK Beauty, no this is a hot and flashy brush, and go in with the darkest. Hmm, it's not as dark as I thought it might be. These two colors, which are dark, have shimmers in them. Oh, that's much lighter than I thought it might be. So it's like this one and this one. And I am very, very confused why there would be glitters in something this dark. Even if you have very, very dark skin, this is only going to look like a teeny bit of color and some shimmers. So nah, that could be pretty. I think I'm just going to do this shade and we'll just keep it simple. I've not even cleaned off that brush. <laughs> and put it right here. Oh, that's a little more vibrant than I thought it might be, but I didn't clean off the brush, so. It's a pretty palette, you guys. But I have palettes that are warm that I love more, like the uh, Dior Backstage in Coral. Oh, I love that palette. This kind of does the same thing, but not quite. I like that palette better. But if you were totally on a budget and wanted a kind of corally look, maybe this is the way to go for you. But for me, I'm not thinking, yeah, this is exciting me so much. So I'm not going to do liner yet because you know what? I didn't choose a liner that I want to say goodbye to. And I've already thrown away my Lancome mascaras, which are definitely I'm saying goodbye to. So I, I I think I've got nothing in that group. I want to go on with powder. This hurts. This hurts, you guys, and you're gonna see why in a minute. The clay de Poe. This is huge. There's a huge amount. It's so elegant. I think I'm just gonna keep it because it's so pretty. See how these are cut right here? Isn't that it's pretty? It has a puff, and then you twist this up. And there's your powder, goes through a net. It has a very slightly pink hue to it, which actually, not so bad, but it picks up a lot of product. Let's just shake that off. But whenever I put this on, you guys, it hurts my skin. And today's probably not gonna be any different because I shaved my face last night, so my skin is going to hurt anyway. But there's something in there that I don't know if it's drying or what. Now this brush, I haven't tried it with. It's a little bit scented, it doesn't bother me that much. And this brush I've just gotten in the last couple of months. So this is kind of interesting to see if maybe this will make me like this powder. Wow, this would be really bad if I did a video saying goodbye forever and then change my mind about things when I put them on. Okay, so it's mattified me a little bit, but I'm not entirely matte, and I am okay with that. And let's just try it under the eyes, because the one thing I was thinking, recently I got that Givenchy pink powder for the video I did with uh, Lana Davidson's favorites from this year. And she thought it was very brightening under the eye, and I did not find that I had that same experience. But this one, I might, I mean, very slightly pink. So let's see. I have a little bit of creasing. But I'm going to pull you in right now so you can see what this Laura Mercier concealer looks like. And doesn't look so bad. It is a little bit thicker. Hmm. But it's not making me look really dry. But you do have to be a little careful with your blend, I think. And it creased a little bit in my trough. That happens with 
almost everything. And let's go on with the Clay de Po powder and see if that has a drying effect or a brightening effect or one or the other. More so than I got with the, yes. I feel like this is giving me the brightening effect that I would prefer over that Givenchy. Huh. Ha. <laughs> huh. This one I know is going back. This is the Christian Dior Forever highlighter in Rosewood Glow, and it's just too dark on me. It leaves that kind of stripe. It was so hard to find a color that might work for me on their website. They just didn't do a great job with their photos. The photos were beautiful, and the models were insanely beautiful, of course, but it's about the color. And I thought, well, I saw this on one of the models, and I thought, that might do it for me. But you can see how incredibly dark it is. And I don't know. I mean, maybe I should keep it for eyeshadow. It's a beautiful highlighter. It's really subtle. And it feels smooth. And I'm just seeing that sheen has come to life right there. So darn pretty. Really, really pretty. But I don't know. I was feeling like, okay. Mind you, the light is getting less and less, and there's more light on this side. But look at this cheek to this cheek. You can see more darkness there, right? I definitely, definitely see a darkness. It's just a little too dark for me. Maybe it's something I will keep for blush, a blush topper eyeshadow. I can't find my beauty blender. So I'm just going to take this brush to marry these two colors, the blush color and the highlighter color together. Let me know what you think, you guys. I think the theme of this video is changing to goodbye forever, I think, and audience participation because I don't know. Uh, maybe it's okay. Now for bronzer, I know this is going back. This is supposed to be cool. I think I mentioned this in another video where I thought I really wanted to get something from Guerlain in a bronzer because they're so known for them. They, this is called Cool. This is the second one I bought. Like the first one I bought, I thought this is wrong. And somebody had said on the Sephora site they had the wrong names for them. This one is supposed to be cool and it is so, so warm. And I used it several times and then I got something else and I thought, you know what, this color is just not it for me. I want to show you how it loaded on the brush. You can see, that's warm, right? It definitely takes some off on my hands before I go in with this. I'm going to scoochie up a little bit, going in with a very light hand. And it's scented as well. I think I'm going to depend on you guys to tell me if I should get rid of these things. Because it's so late and we just have the teeniest bit of sun in the back here, I will definitely be going into the bathroom just to see if I am right. I'm just going to put it a little bit so I have a little sun-kissed look going on there. Okay, tell me what you think. So we have, I think, almost everything except for lips, and I am not changing my mind on the lips. I had put something on my lips before I started, so my lips are feeling really, really nice, and I need that because I hate this product. This is the Giorgio Armani. The idea behind this is that it is long-lasting but has a sheen, and the reason it's long-lasting, in my humble opinion, is because... It has the effect of a liquid lipstick. So it I still get that crinkled, dried out look that some liquid lipsticks give me, but it's shiny. So, and I don't even really like a shiny lipstick. So it's the worst of both worlds for me. Why are we doing this? I'm also really not sure about this color on me. And this color is 102, and I feel like 
I most definitely need to put some kind of liner on my lips, so let's do that. And I just grabbed whatever liner I had that uh, didn't look pink. And I'm not in love with the idea of a dark liner with a light lipstick. That doesn't exactly thrill me. And you know what's weird? Get out of town. I'm not finding this to be uncomfortable. Which doesn't mean <laughs> that when I turn off the camera, then it will happen. But I had... Every time I tried this on, I thought, oh my god, this is so uncomfortable. It's just drying me out to bits. Let me do a little bit of mascara, and we will just kind of hang out here for a few minutes. And um, I'll do my eyebrows and my liner and all of that bit. And I will come back, and we'll, we'll go through it all. I'm back. I looked in the other room, and I feel like I look tan. <laughs> I found my beauty blender and I just want to go over it with everything because I have, you know, bronzer on and highlighter on and all this stuff that I feel needs to be really melded in together. So my initial feelings were, wow, I look tan. So maybe, I don't know. Maybe the bronzer isn't so bad. Let's start at the beginning. The Kosas. I'm not finding it to be uncomfortable. My biggest problem is finding a good shade for me. And do I love it so much that I need to have three bottles in here? This is a small room. I don't have a lot of storage. So I want you to vote on as much as these for which you have a strong opinion. I am on the fence, but I'm inclined to just say bye-bye because I have so many foundations as it is. Powder. This powder is not making me look really dry under the eyes, which is nice. I'm still creasing. It's creasing in this trough, even though I keep on going in here to blend it out. The first blend is very, very common, but usually after that I don't have a problem right away. So I'm not so sure about the concealer. I think it is going to go bye-bye. So let me know what your thoughts are. I will say it has solid coverage. I mean, I look like I've been skiing, right? <laughs> with this whiteness around my eyes. So the powder, let's try again on the face with the powder brush that I usually use, which is the Wayne Goss. The brush that I used was a BK Beauty brush, and I applied my powder in a way that I usually don't. So let's just give this another try and see if this is something that will mattify me a teeny bit more and that doesn't hurt my face, which is hard to judge today because I shaved last night. Okay, so let me know what your thoughts are on the powder. I would say for sure brightening under the eyes. So we just did concealer, we did foundation, Let's talk about the eyeshadow palette. I don't think I am going to keep it. It's just not doing anything for my complexion. But the Guerlain, I have to say, when I looked in the mirror in the bathroom, I thought, I look like I'm tan. Um, maybe there is a place for this, but it's not the kind of color that I usually do when I do a bronzer. I want something a little cooler because when I get some color, there's some coolness coming in because there's usually a little bit of just a little bit of sunburn nature to it. There, I just uh, closed this door so there's some light coming in from the bathroom, so I look a little bit more even. So let me know what you think about that because I'm not 100% sure. This, let's show you. It is super super pretty. I just want to do a swatch for you. There it is. It's just too dark for me. And I was thinking maybe it's something I keep for eyeshadow. It's a very, I think, subtle, glassy kind of look. There's no chunk in here, and I really, really appreciate that. The blush, I like the color of the blush. I don't have to put more on, and that's good. But for sure, you just do not need this in my life. It is so fussy. 
If you're in a hurry, you make a mistake, you do too much. It's like you have to put a little on, a little on, and be really ginger with it. And then wait, do the rest of your makeup and see if it's faded, and then do it again. It's just too fussy. If you're a makeup artist, that's your job. You know, you do some of the face, you come back and you see how everything's doing, and you're back and forth and back and forth. But I'm not a makeup artist. Toffee. <laughs> um, the lip. I have to say, I, I will leave a pin comment below and I will let you know if I found that it got more comfortable as time went on. I think the color, not so hot for me. Yeah, not deeply in love with the color in the least. Skin looks really nice though. It is not as uncomfortable as I remember. And I tried this three, four, five times before I thought, like, no, this is deeply uncomfortable. And I have to say, I went on with this from Emile Cordon. Cordon? Cordon. Which I keep here on the table, which is why it's rather filthy. But I usually don't remember to put it on right after my foundation. I don't like to put something on my lips before my foundation, lest my brush kind of takes that and puts it all over the place. But I did remember to put this on at some point. And, hi Gracie. And um, I'm finding, as a result, this is not uncomfortable. I don't think it's pretty, so I think I might be throwing it away anyway. Uh, but super not so uncomfortable, and I'll leave you a pinned comment below. And I, I think this is such a scattered, weird video because, really, truly, I was just doing the red light, watching someone's video, and my mind was kind of wandering, and I thought, oh... I could do like a whole face of goodbye, goodbye forever. And that is it. I don't think it's my best look, I, <laughs> I have to tell you. Let me see if just a darker lip color will work for me. I love this, it's called Tease Me, and it's not gonna go necessarily because the blush is decidedly orange uh, and the eyeshadow is kind of peachy. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys, <laughs> that's going to end today's video. <laughs> I'm sure you enjoyed yourself. I really hope you enjoyed yourself. That's always my intention, uh, enjoying yourself, getting a laugh, or something helpful. And until we meet again, be safe and smart, and I'm wishing you good health.